I'm done with this one. I actually spent a bit of time, decided to scale off uh, the fat layer of a matrix surrounding this top ridge and I've exposed another section of, uh, of uh, crystal faces. So I cleaned all of this off, took a bit of time, a big fat chunk there. So got some cool looking uh, intersecting crystal lines there and this guy is now ready for polishing. Huge matrix piece on nice. Not too bad, guys. Not too bad. Reminds me of like a Mayan uh, pyramid on top of a like a rock hillside right there. Beautiful. Hi everybody, Anthony here. Thank you for watching Crystal Miner Rocks. So I am going to uh, talk about cleaning and polishing your garnets. Uh, I found a boatload of them in a uh, little pine garnet mine up in North Carolina and I uh, just needed to figure out how to basically make them shine and make them look great. Uh, scoured the internet uh, and looked for you know how to do it. Uh, page after page was just coming up with uh, put your garnet or your crystal in a rock tumbler. Oh my gosh. Uh, soap and water and then uh, polishing with the Dremel. Uh, just so they will show you these little accessories and pieces with, but not really show you the the process of how to do it and it was really frustrating um, so then I just basically took nuggets of information I talked to my friend my lapidary friend Lee and just and I got his advice um, and then took all my tools that I had which is not a lot of them um, and then just started a process of trial and error and just figuring it out so let's uh, let's go through that right now this video is uh, about um, trying to clean up these garnets uh, either loose or in matrix and basically bring out their beauty in their natural form. It's not about polishing or cutting or faceting uh, a crystal or garnet crystals which I found tons of references on as well uh, but I'm not doing jewelry. That's not what this is about. It's about getting these guys to look beautiful in their natural state. Um, here's another one here. There's a huge garnet inside in this matrix and I'm trying to figure out how to, how to, what's the best way to get this off safely and uh, you know you end up where you end up with something like this and check out that beauty so that's my goal for this video and this how-to um, and hopefully you guys will learn from my process um, here's some examples of loose ones that I did find um, this is not even cleaned up actually uh, still got the original dirt on there um, obviously a lot less work to clean singles because there's le less risk and then eventually you're going to get it to a result like this where they are buffed and polished and scale and you still keep the original form and they're not tumbled or you know cut into facets of jewelry all right i'm working with almondine garnets um, i know that everyone's crystal or matrix type will be a little different so adjust accordingly so after many hours of uh, testing and uh, experimenting with uh, some sample sacrifice pieces I eventually came down to a you know comfort level of using different uh, techniques and it, it was actually kind of simple so eventually I just ended up basically using these two metal picks and that was pretty much it besides that I have my uh, Dremel and the needle nose so those are the two tools that I pretty much ended up with for hours and hours of cleaning uh, we'll be going through a mechanical and chemical process in doing this uh, so first just get your crystal uh, cleaned off uh, small brush brush and water just get all the excess of uh, uh, dirt and material off and then we're going to go through a uh, oxalic acid uh, sorry, oxalic acid uh, bath and then after that which it softens and gets rid of all the iron uh, then we take it out and then we're going to do a light buff or whatever is missing or you missed um, and then again you repeat the process as needed but uh, as I got better it was just you know first stage trimming it down acid bath light buff and then the polish so eventually you get a, you get that system going here's a piece of the uh, polishing uh, rouge uh, the polishing compound that I use at the end a uh, little tip uh, don't leave this in the sun <laughs> I was cleaning outside 
and uh, this was uh, in the sun inside the uh, journal box for about an hour, I think, and it liquefied. I had no idea it was going to do that. So I had to buy a replacement set. This is an NK brand. It has like a pack of six uh, different uh, types in there. Uh, so which it also had the replacement one, which is the same uh, one that I started using. Okay, before I forget, let me just uh, get this out of the way. Uh, I'm using an N95 mask. Uh, definitely want this on. You don't want to be breathing in all the little powder dust. Goggles, uh, if you're using uh, drills, um, Dremel and uh, you know grinders and so forth, fire protection. If I sound muffled, that's because I'm wearing this all the time when I'm talking. The mine that I went to did have a posting of how to acid bath uh, clean the garnets. Um, the instructions said, uh, and I think I repeated it later in the video, uh, three days of soaking. Um, I only found that I, to get what I was doing about a day, maybe a day and a half was, was, was enough. Um, but again, you guys, if the stain is still there or you want to just keep going, um, go longer. But uh, definitely want to take it out after day one or two and then clean off the uh, yellow scum that's on there and then continue soaking. That's what I found to work out. For my Dremel use, um, I stay between 2,000 and under 4,000 RPM, uh, usually about two to three. Uh, here's your needle nose. Uh, hold this in place while you're loosening and tightening your accessory. Uh, it's really hard to do that with your hands. So have a needle nose handy. Um, so go light on the Dremel, because if you start going up, uh, you might damage the crystal. The wire brushes that I found really to be the most effective tool is uh, these small ones. Uh, here's the disc wheel, and I guess this is called a cone maybe. Um, in the video, I was using this uh, all the time because I ran out of these until uh, I got some stock in. So they do wear out, um, so you don't want to burn through them too quickly. Um, keep some of these smaller ones around because sometimes you can't get into the tight corners with the, the new larger ones and you just need to get into that spot, so keep some of these. The um, garnet has a hardness of 6.5 to 7.5, which is like quartz, so it's pretty strong stuff. Um, but the difference is that I found that the garnet has a lot of brittle pieces in there So hitting this in the wrong way, uh, even though this is technically softer, will uh, start chipping away and break your crystal That's not a good thing um, Something else, these guys will uh, kind of burn into the crystal I took it at 4000 RPM and just put it on a flat spot on the crystal And just kept at it for about a minute and I could see a divot show up So. Uh, do be aware that this can start damaging a crystal which is why in the video I keep saying um, I'm using a pick more because I, I discovered that this can damage the crystal surface uh, over time that is that's assuming it's like 4,000 rpm or higher which is uh, something you don't want to really be at unless you're burning into a piece of matrix really hard so I kept the light at two to three thousand rpm um, I used the pick almost exclusively until I needed to just get the light stuff off of this and then that's how I was able to safely get the matrix off and then just be left with the crystal. Regarding the rouge or your, your final uh, process when you start applying these guys, go light. There's, uh, I found that you don't need a whole lot as the internet kept saying. Um, if, not, if you do put too much, you're going to end up using a small brush like this to basically scrub out the uh, polish in the nooks and crannies of the crystal uh, assuming it's garnet like this uh, and then you know maybe even starting over the process so go very very light um, there's no harm in just you know softly going over and over again applying it and then uh, going from back for more but if you put a heavy dose of it it's just gonna get caked in all the little holes and crevices of the crystal okay so now you guys know the process of what's gonna happen um, that might be enough for you guys um, if you were looking for something visual, which is what I kind of needed, I'm a very visual person, I needed to see how someone's holding a crystal, how they're doing it, at least maybe one, to give me a little bit of reassurance. So that's what I'll be doing here uh, for you guys. It's only about seven or eight minutes of footage. Um, believe it or not, I was working with like two or three, three pieces. It took me like two and a half hours to, to trim all this matrix off of it. So it's very laborious, slow. Uh, it's certainly not riveting, you know, <laughs> I'm just like uh, scraping, scaling, applying water, buffing with the Dremel, just repeating the process over and over again, really, really slowly and carefully. Uh, but if you, if you want a good result, this is Bigfoot. It's one of my favorite pieces. He is amazing. Uh, it takes time and care to extract that crystal out from the matrix. He is just a phenomenal piece.
can't believe I found them. Um, so if you want to see the, the mechanical process, watch a little bit of it. I left the, just the clips that had some commentary that might be useful. And then from there I went to the acid bath and so forth. So check it out. So here's a uh, large one. Uh, I'm going to scale some of this uh, matrix as much as I can off. Um, got multiple garnets everywhere. I already started doing this, so we're going to start with the uh, old pick here. And even, even this spot right here uh, would take a bit of time to buff down. Um, so go mechanical, just scrape these guys up gently. I will use a downward pressure because there's not a lot of uh, um, matrix holding this guy down, so I'm going to push down towards the matrix. If you end up using uh, the wire brush, it will take a bit of time to just buff this little chunk of uh, matrix off. If you're not sure where the matrix is at, just add a little water, softens, softens it up a bit. Fortunately, this crystal has got a nice flat face, so I can tell so far that I'm not going to be gouging into any of the pits. I think I'm going to start back on this guy here. See how much of it's left. You know, I just kind of go by my gut feel and see where the crystal ends and where the. Uh... Alright, this is good. It's just starting to soften up mud up here and I'm getting a smooth face so I'm just going to continue slowly scaling this off This one's looking like it's got some nice flat sides. You do want to scale over that area if possible because eventually the wire brush is going to have to hit that spot and if you got too much uh, matrix above it, it won't get in that, it won't be able to buff that corner or that crystal face very well. So, first just determine where the crystal ends where you want to go, how far, and then you start attacking the matrix above it. All right, time to uh, buff it off and to see how it looks like. Doing this for the camera is not easy. Because the wire brush spins one direction, eventually you'll want to hit it with the opposite side as well. Because that clears off the matrix going the other direction. So working on this guy here, I see this can be cleaned up some more. All those bumps there. That can come out. This is kind of hard, but I know it's the matrix. So just see the black. So get a little water, slowly pick at it. Here's one that's already buffed and cleaned off and scaled and I'm going to get a couple of nice presentation faces here. But for these two, where you see these pits and crevices and the growth lines, um, just I wouldn't go any further. I mean, I've got, I've got a little bit out of it, but you'll never really get that out. And if you keep digging it out there, it's just going to possibly damage the crystal. 
Um, so when you buff it out, at least you get that looking nice. You'll see that when it gets polished or has the wet look after it's done, you'll still see the black and you just won't, as far as I know, I can't get it out. Um, you know, I'm already using oxalic acid and after three days, that just does not dissolve away. I mean, I've not done it for where I'd sit it in it for a week uh, or if there's something stronger that can dissolve it out, but I'm not sure what the result is or how, how much better it's gonna look if you actually get all of the mica schist out and it's just all crystal, but you'll still see the, you know, the deformity, so to speak, of, of on that face. So you guys can uh, take it to that level if you want. But I normally just stop till it's flat, and I'll just leave that in there. There. The mica schist matrix does soften up quite a bit, um, soaking in the oxalic acid. So just maybe doing it too long in there um, can make this thing just dissolve away, which. You know, you really wouldn't want that. It looks great the way it is, I, you know, of course it only Because you can just crack this off, but the longer you soak in it, I think, it's just going to make this thing dis disintegrate. So in trying to get these guys out, you're going to kill the rest of the, the look. So that's unfortunately the way it is, but uh, their beauty, their beauty lies right there. I don't know if you guys can see that little nub right there. The polishing wheel just isn't doing it, so sometimes... I can just scale it off. See, it's coming off. I can tell that it's just a lump of matrix, but the, the polishing wheel just isn't getting it off. So, that's where the pick comes in. Just really gently back and forth. And it's breaking up. And then if I hit it again with the wheel, that's probably gonna be fine really careful here another little spot that's bugging me but it will not ever come out the scaling a bit of, of it off if you see gray if you see black that's the matrix real gentle all right let's see how this guy looks like if he was buffed up and polished and looking all pretty Here are a couple of samples uh, to show you the degrees of uh, quality and growth that I've come across. Uh, these two are the best. Uh, you can see there's just a lot of solid faces. And um, this one actually split while I was working on it, so it can happen. You put that pick in there and it'll, it'll just break it sometimes. This is another beautiful piece right there. I don't know if this is considered jewelry grade or, uh, you know, uh, but you can cut it down to a gem or something because I don't do any of that stuff, but that's uh, about as good as I've seen quality-wise. A lot of them are more like this, where you see uh, you know, a lot of lines and striations and the mica schist is still in there. Don't go crazy trying to pick that out. It's just really not gonna make it look that much better. I've tried, uh, but these will still look really pretty when you soak them in uh, water or uh, a mineral oil. And that's another one right there, so. They all have their own beauty. Really nice. This one is like a gnarly one. I just wanted to see how it looks like it when I dropped it in acid. It's either degraded or it wasn't fully formed. But uh, see all those little growth sections. So that's what you can find out there. Most of the ones I have are like this. But they're beautiful in their matrix pieces too. Really nice. Here's an example of a finished product. Um, you can see there's just all the areas where there's not a flat crystal face. Uh, you just want to concentrate on what you can get to look nice, which is all these flat sides, because uh, getting that mica schist matrix out is pretty much pointless to a certain extent. And after that you buff it all out, that's what you're left with. There. Just get the crystal faces looking as best as they can. So as far as materials you need, something like a two gallon bucket. Um, of course the acid, uh, I'm just using recyclable products. Uh, that's a one gallon juice jug. A funnel, that's handy. And something long to stir, these are my handy tongs here. 
Uh, so you, the instructions are you start with uh, three quarters uh, gallon of uh, hot water, mix in one pound of the acid, oxalic acid, and uh, what I did was I just weighed it all out. That's a five pound bag I got from Walmart. That was like the best price. Can't believe I got a deal on that. Um, so I just weighed it all out, put them in a separate container and just, that way I don't have to deal with it anymore. Just get it all done, separate them. Um, so now when I wanna do a batch, I just take this thing and drop it in there. So three quarter gallon, uh, stir it until it's all dissolved and then you pour in the uh, remaining one uh, quarter gallon of water, cold water, mix it all up in that and then put a Get your funnel, stick it in here, and there's your there's your mixture right there. So get yourself a, a jug ready to go. This one I have a really good feeling about. Uh, I got a couple of buried ones here, the little long columnar ones. I uh, see another one sticking out here, one on the belly here, and there's even a nub here. I feel that's that's probably one there. So this is probably going to be a really nice piece when I'm done. So um, maybe I'm going to pop this part off here, expose this part of the crystal, and uh, start scaling it. Here it goes. I uh, see a split line right there. So this is soft stuff, so I'm not going to go hard at all. This is probably going to separate from it, but it is what it is. I might as well just pull it from here. Okay, a little fragment. Alright, you got one. Boy, he's just barely holding on. Barely holding on to the matrix. Here are the two chunks left with the, the garnets. It's barely hanging on. Um, that's actually the bottom of this guy inside as it's now exposed. Uh, there's somebody else here. Okay, I decided I'm going to just break this piece off. Um, so careful. This guy can pop off anytime. Boy. Well, I'm gonna work it off slowly. Start with the Dremel. On occasion, I'll even use needle nose if it's uh, appropriate. So I've got some flat spots here. And I just need to break it off or crush it actually. I need to get to that spot. I'm going to need to soften this up a bit. All right, this is looking uh, okay. So when you get to this point and you've just buffed everything when it's dry that's still the matrix everything that you see this gray and brown is the matrix um, I, it's not perfect of course but that's pretty much as good as it gets now and I'm going to soak it in acid with these uh, other ones 
and uh, they'll probably there's always going to be a once over so after it comes out of acid I'm just going to see any of the little tiny dots we're going to just get and hit those real quick and then it's pretty much soaked in water and then it's uh, ready to go let's see how this looks a little water on it here Oh, and I also found this little guy here. Where'd he go? Ah, shoot. I went back into the pile. And this is the cap, because I noticed that it broke off. So I think I might be able to just fix it if it still fits. Where is it? Yep. Take it out. So here we are at the uh, soaking process. That's a, I just left this for you guys to see. Here's one of the uh, containers from soaking uh, my last batch and I saw the iron residue and all the other gunk that comes out of the, uh, the crystals. Um, this stuff will actually embed inside the uh, matrix. Not so much a crystal, but then it looks kind of gnarly. So it does need to be scrubbed out. Um, if you soak it for three days per the instructions, um, I would at day one and maybe day two pull them out and just uh, here's like you know pull it out and you start seeing that that yellow stuff just settle in there scrub it out and then you know continue soaking um, so what I do is here's a couple of tips that I've learned over the years uh, here's an example that thing just will actually embed itself in quartz um, that's how nasty it is um, so I'll just get some riser pieces like this that way um, the crystal because if you just put it in the vat in the, in the bucket and at the bottom it, the whole bottom is just going to be covered in yellow so I use this to basically raise it up that way I'm not having to scrub the crystal really hard um, so you can use pebbles anything like that um, a couple of things uh, here I also uh, you know you can get this like at a dollar store so here's a little caddy that I've used before just to kind of for the small stuff then I can lift the whole thing up and they're not all, again, the crystal is not sitting in the yellow iron oxide residue and I have to scrub each of them hard. So that's an easy way to take them out. Even made, a, took a little small, you know, plastic recyclable container and put some holes in it. So even small ones to, I use that for like the calcite crystals. Um, something else, if I didn't have the pebbles, you can use this, just kind of invert it. I've done that as well. So just drop this inside like that. And then, you know, the large crystals go on top and nothing is going to be sitting in that yellow nasty stuff so I'm gonna get my prepared up and drop these guys in alright everybody's in there I even got this huge uh, matrix piece in there that I buffed earlier I want to see if I can get him in there hopefully I've got enough uh, acid to get to the top uh, you want to use some eye protection of course don't want this thing splashing back so this is it's gonna barely make it okay all right, that's not bad. All righty, almost. And I've got these two small loose crystals that we were doing, so I'm just gonna drop them in here like that. Then I'm gonna wash my hands, and then we let this. I'm gonna let this one soak for just a day. Okay, so here's a trick: if I need the acid to cover that uh, crystal, but I'm out of it add something to displace the uh, mass as long as it's in the liquid it'll rise add some right there there you go it's going up already and then I've got another this is just quartz so it's not gonna it's already clean quartz so there you go add mass to it water level rises covers the crystal this is a uh, 12 hour soak so far. We got uh, the nice uh, scummy yellow stain from the iron. And actually, I don't think I can get this out. Well, maybe. Okay. So let's get these puppies out. Get them washed off. Got my singles. I'm gonna rinse them off just with water at first and then uh, you get a quick look and buff them down. 
The cleaning instructions that are posted at the garden mine say to uh, soak these in water for uh, like three days, but I usually only do it for a day, maybe two. Um, use purified water uh, or distilled water as clean as you can, if possible, and change it out regularly. Uh, typically, I just don't feel like the smell is that strong even after a day of soaking, so I don't go that, that long anymore. Look how beautiful and shimmery they are. Put out that iron. It's so nice. This is that piece with uh, the nice matrix right there, that hard stuff. Um, so anyway, you guys, everyone's got a different sense of smell, so, you know, uh, just change out the water regularly and uh, do it as many days as you like just to get that, uh, that acid smell out. I'm going to show you guys a shot of that metamorphic rock, host rock, uh, nice. See all that beautiful banding, and that schistos and the mica and the quartz. Really heavy piece too. Wanted to show you guys uh, it's two quality pieces here. Uh, these are all been wire brushed and cleaned and fully done. You can see that uh, this is just a solid piece. Um, very little growth lines or pits. Um, I guess just the higher grade uh, quality pieces here, the smaller one. Uh, most of them that I found were like this, where you've got some uh, growth lines and pits, even though this one is fully cleaned up and wire brushed. Uh, so it's looking really nice. And uh, this is my sacrifice piece and I decided to, you know, at one point I didn't know how much I, how, where the, the grinding wood would come in play. Um, so I, s I took a sacrifice piece here and just, you know, went to town on it. I didn't hold back, just kept grinding it down and it was a long time. I mean, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, I didn't keep track, but that's a long time just, just grinding the heck out of this thing. So I kept the shape as you can see and it's a cool looking piece, uh, smooth to the touch. I was going back and forth. Uh, but after all that time, it is still that way. It takes a significant amount of grinding to get it down to, and this is not even flat, but you know, to this point. So after discovering that, I, I just realized this is not for me. So other than using the uh, bench grinder to tear off uh, you know, pieces of matrix that were too hard for the pick, the hand pick, um, I basically didn't use it anymore. <laughs> um, so here is the test piece that you guys may or may not want to get to that. If you're a lapidary person you want to get that to a high shine, I think the, the next step really is to get it, uh, is to get these uh, polishing uh, Dremel tools. I know you can go from like 80 grit to like you know a couple of thousand and just basically get it down all the way till it's completely flat from what I understand from the uh, lapidary guys. Uh, all my knowledge comes from the guy named Lee from my rock club. Thank you Lee. Uh, you've got to get it completely flat before you try that high high polish and um, and that's where it's gonna take probably like hours which I don't have the time for <laughs> it's a labor of love and uh, I'm just more into the, the specimen pieces here so getting these guys to look beautiful with uh, you know the way they are um, you know just that's it for the grinding wheel in my use the rest of the time has just been that wire brush Dremel and the hand pick I'll be using this smaller uh, wire brush to go over the last little bit, um, you know, we're hoping to get that one, last one percent of the matrix out, and it is uh, much easier to see the little guys now against the darker uh, garnet. Now that the iron's off, so all these little bits that that you missed the first time, there's always some that you miss. It's just the way it is. Here's that large chunk, and. Uh, so I might use the pick on that little small hole there. So just give it that once over. So I'll spend very little time on this portion now. And the matrix, the host rocks uh, matrix is now a beautiful shimmery silver. So cool. Okay, you see these little uh, gray guys? And I usually don't use water as well because they're just a small little bit. Um, and I just go dry typically. If I don't see it anymore, it's gone. Use water if you need to. Just wait till it disappears. Go the other direction. You see all that gray disappear? And that's pretty much what you're left with is the naked eye. If you don't see it after the buff, it will be gone.
if you still see a dot like that, it's going to be there after it's wet. So use the pick or continue buffing. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Even that little dot right there can go away. Here's another good example. So all this, all this little stuff here that we missed the first time, I'm going to give it a quick pass and we should just see the crystal at the end and then decide if you want to pick out the rest with the pick. All that little gray is going out. There you go. So, just see the nice crystal face when it's done. It's amazing how all this gets missed the first time, but it's so much easier to tell against the darker red now. And also everything's a bit softer as well, after the soap. It's all just disappearing. So. Well, let's go the opposite direction as well. That's the thick spot, so I might scale this one. I even did a once over on this uh, gray matrix area. Picked out a lot of little spots, looking much better. Picked out all the stuff in this little corner in this bottom section. And that's what we're left with. Look at that beauty. This is also, uh, you'll see some banding from the quartz in this nice matrix right here. So, big chunk of uh, mica schist with a nice, beautiful scallop. This chunk of matrix right here in this crevice has uh, been bugging me. <laughs> so, uh, I decided to try to, try to pick him out. I, I didn't know if I wanted to have this big gap I mean, this is the matrix right here, keeping it flat, but I wasn't sure if I, after I took it off, how it's going to look like with a big gap in there, but it was bugging me, so I decided to, I'm going to pick it out, and it's very soft, fortunately, because it's been soaked in the acid, but there it goes, just uh, very gentle, so it looks like, okay, it looks like I got like a intersecting twin or something, and I do have a flat surface right there, so it's not going to look gnarly. Nice. Let's clean this up. I'm polishing my crystals, and I got a visit from a snake bird. Uh, that's his nickname. See his long neck? He, it'll stick out of the water, and it looks like a snake head. Uh, his real name is an Inhinga, and he uh, hunts uh, fish in the water, but he actually lives on land. So after a while, he has to come out and dry his fe feathers off. Pretty cool looking. So here are the picks that I was using. Uh, I got it at Harbor Freight, it's a big kit. And the two small handheld ones are these guys right here. The straight and the curved. I actually have not used this. It turns out this has pretty much been the most handy. Um, I like it because I can direct the uh, point with my thumb as I'm you know, using both hands instead of just one. You know, it just depends, but basically it's been really handy. I've basically not had to change from using this. Um, I've used it so much that it's really hard on the hand and I think I'm going to put some tennis grip on this just to make it easier to hold and you know you're doing it for like hours sometimes so that's pretty much what I've been using. This seems to be the best tool or something similar. Here's the final process. This is a polishing rouge, um, also called a jeweler's rouge. Use a uh, polishing pad. I'm going to apply a very small amount to it. And I'm going to start with this guy. We're just going to put a very light coat all around it, just like that. The benefit of this one is that it is uh, got a lot of flat surfaces and uh, this crystal face and not a lot of pits. So it'll come out much better than when you've got a piece that's really pocked up, uh, like this one, where you've just got a lot of pits in there. So then you'll have to get the, the rouge out as well. 
So I will apply it a little bit to this specimen here and then go on to the next. Same principle applies, go all around different directions. On this side of the side of the crystal, you see all these pits and holes. Go very, very light on the rouge. Uh, you should be doing that anyway, but uh, even more so on these guys because you'll just end up having to scrub it out with a brush. It's always best when the crystal is a, a flat surface. We all hope for that. So I'm done with the uh, applying the rouge. I will typically rinse off the specimen. Um, they will be. Uh, you know the rouge in the matrix because uh, it's just a hard thing to get you know like something this big and fat in there <laughs> uh, so then that's what this uh, small toothbrush is for you can scrub out uh, gently any rouge you don't want in the matrix as well as any nooks and crannies in the crystal hope this video will help you guys clean your next crystal or garnet uh, if you enjoyed it hit the like and subscribe button thank you for following me and watching and supporting um, you can also find me on facebook crystal miner rocks uh, it's a public group uh, where I share crystals and uh, uh, specimens from my private collection, and we also talk about crystals. Also on Instagram, Crystal Miner Rocks On. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the clips. I just got done polishing this one off. What a beauty! I don't think I even need to rinse them off. Now that's one sexy crystal. Wow. What a what an awesome. Uh, result. Go post! Oh, maybe Stonehenge. Yeah. Here's that big boy, Mr. Scallop. Looking mighty impressive right there. A little bitty guy there. Another one. Got some double action going on or something like that. And then the other, the other scallop. Double-sided scallops. Super cool. I remember this one here, I almost missed it. It was covered in uh, mud when I found him. I almost missed this guy, so happy I brought him home. In a beautiful, nice matrix. Look at those layers. I wish you guys could have seen the before and after, the full transformation of this large matrix piece. He was a lot of work. Um, after I got to the polish phase, I. I started taking a closer look at this guy and I noticed that he was a really solid piece and it wasn't quite as porous as some of the other ones that uh, I have as well. And then I took that straight pick and just started just gouging out all the matrix and all of these little nooks and crannies and it took a long time. I even exposed uh, this crystal face a lot better, um, just gouging all those hard chunks out. So it was a lot of work on this one, but it turned out pretty good, a lot, lot better than I expected. Nice double nugget on this guy. These next few pieces have uh, not been polished, but they have a light coat of mineral oil on it. Um, they've just been clean and water brushed before I applied it and left it overnight. Um, so some pieces look really cool with uh, the texturing and the iron staining still left on it. Just got to have a lot of light in your display case if you're going to do it this way. A little secondary option of displaying these guys. Hey guys, check this one out. He looks fat, but he's actually that tall, long crystal that was shown earlier uh, that's all polished up. He's sitting in a small glass in mineral oil. 
uh, in, embedded inside uh, a bunch of small pieces of mica schist. So he's kind of back in his native environment. Uh, beautiful way to display these guys. Small uh, glass with mineral oil in it. Just want to give you guys some ideas. 